In this video, you'll learn about some of the science behind learning to read. As an educator, specialist, or interventionist, understanding these scientific foundations will enhance your work to support students who struggle with reading. Here's an overview of some of the things you'll see and learn about in this video. There are three well-known representations or models or ways of thinking about how reading works that we'll cover here in this video. The simple view of reading states that reading comprehension is the product of word recognition skill and language comprehension. The four-part processing model, which is based on recent research in neurobiology and how the brain actually functions during reading, explains how the brain processes language and print while you read. The third model is the reading rope, sometimes called Scarborough's rope. The reading rope demonstrates the connections between and among the many different skills that are required for proficient or successful reading. Now that you know a little bit about the new information that you'll learn about in this video, let's take a few minutes to review some of the essential background knowledge that you need. Phonological awareness is a group of skills that includes the ability to identify and manipulate the different units of oral language. One of those specific skills is phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness is the ability to identify and manipulate individual phonemes in words. It's important to remember that phonemic awareness and phonological awareness are not the same thing. You should not use those terms interchangeably. Orthographic mapping is the name for the mental process of learning and storing sound spelling connections, like knowing that the grapheme or letter B makes the B sound. As children's phonemic awareness skills grow, their orthographic mapping enables them to effortlessly remember or retrieve those links so that they can sound out words quickly. Semantics is one of the systems of language. Semantics has to do with meaning. It's the system that builds and connects meanings of words, phrases, and sentences. And finally, decoding is the ability to convert a word from print to speech using knowledge of phoneme-grapheme correspondences. Now that you've activated the background knowledge you'll need, let's define a term you'll come across a lot in this video that may be new to you. Language comprehension is the ability to derive meaning from the different elements of spoken or written language. Along with learning to decode words, as children learn to read, they also learn a lot of other elements of language. Those different elements are vocabulary knowledge, including morphology, which is how parts of words like prefixes shape the meaning of the entire word, and etymology, which is using the language that the word originally came from to help us figure out its English meaning. Semantics, which is making meaning from context of what you read and connections you make to your prior knowledge. Syntax, which is understanding and using sentence structure and grammar to help you comprehend text. And figurative language, which is when printed words may mean something other than their literal meaning. Now that we've activated background knowledge and learned the new term that we needed, we're ready to dive in to those big ideas. First, let's take a look at where these ideas and models came from. Decades of research in neuroscience, developmental psychology, cognitive psychology, and education have created a body of knowledge we now call the science of reading. The science of reading isn't a program or a curriculum. It's simply a name for what we've learned from scientific research about how people learn to read and how that should affect how teachers and other caregivers teach reading. It's this body of research that helped us understand what orthographic mapping is and why it's really the foundation of decoding. Knowing about this means we also know how we should explicitly teach early readers about phoneme grapheme correspondences and other decoding and phonics skills. Research in the science of reading has also given us a much better understanding of the differences between fluent readers and readers who struggle with decoding or comprehension, including readers with disabilities like dyslexia. We now know what's actually going on, or not in some cases, in the brains of dyslexic readers and typical fluent readers, and that means we know how to assess the needs of struggling readers and how to design effective instructional interventions. We've learned so much about the actual process of learning to read and what happens while we read. As a result, researchers have come up with several different models of how reading works. The models we will discuss next are the simple view of reading, the four-part processing model, which is also called a connectionist model, and the reading rope model, which is also called Scarborough's rope for the researcher who first developed it. Let's start with the simple view of reading. The first component in this model is something we just defined, word recognition skills. 
We want students to be able to recognize words automatically, eventually. To help them get there, we teach them to decode words. The second component is language comprehension. This refers to several different processes and skills and elements, but all of them have to do with oral language. Oral language develops before understanding printed language or reading does. And so for most learners, it's a vital foundation for learning to read and for becoming a proficient reader. According to the simple view, the goal of learning to read is reading comprehension, which is ultimately what we want students to be able to do when we teach them to read, accurately understand and interpret printed text. What this model shows is that reading comprehension is the product of decoding ability and language comprehension. But this model is presented in this way as a multiplication sentence for a reason. Why do you think it is expressed this way? Think about what the multiplication operation does with numbers, and what could that mean for these skills leading to reading comprehension? Another representation of how reading works is called the four-part processing model. Like the name suggests, this model shows that there are four different processes involved in reading that each have their own network of skills and functions, as well as their own physical neurological circuits and connections in the brain. The main idea of this model is that when we read, these four processes interact with each other in different ways. This model might also give us some ideas about how we could teach reading across different grade levels and abilities. Let's build this model by starting with what you already know are essential to learning to read, knowing about the code or relationships res between phonemes and graphemes. Learning to identify and use those relationships starts with phonological processing and orthographic processing, two of the four processes in this model, but also the basis for any other skills that have to do with reading, such as comprehension or interpretation. In the brain, phonological processing is related to speech and oral language abilities, including expressive and receptive language, phonological awareness, and phonological memory. There's also a center in the brain for orthographic processing, which manages the ability to recognize, remember, and recall written language symbols. In other words, orthographic mapping. The very first encounters that a child has with print, learning letters and their shapes, learning that English is read from left to right, even how a book works and how they should hold it, are processed here. So, these two processes, phonological and orthographic, are essential to being able to decode and recognize words. Instruction that is based on the code is necessary in order to strengthen the connections between these two processes. That type of instruction is usually called phonics. The third part of this model is semantic processing or meaning processing. The job of this part is to interpret the meanings of words. The processing that happens within this part relies on a network of associations that are stored in long-term memory and assist with remembering or retrieving the meaning of a word when you need it. Notice how this processing area is connected to phonological and orthographic processing in the model. Semantic processing may play a small role in decoding or word recognition, but it's obviously important in learning, remembering, and using words accurately. The fourth and final piece of this model is context processing. While meaning processing has to do with accurately interpreting word meanings, context processing has to do with accurately interpreting larger structures like sentences, paragraphs, and even entire topics. Again, note how this area is set up in the model. It is farther removed from, but still dependent on, phonological and orthographic processing, and instead it primarily interacts with meaning processing. But what does all of this neuroscience mean for teaching and learning? What the four-part processing model shows us is that teaching students to read involves all of these processing systems, and that high-quality reading instruction from the early grades on up needs to recognize the connections among these four processing systems and enable those systems to work together. Now that we understand each of the four components in this model, let's think about how the whole thing works or what might cause it not to work. What might cause one of these processing systems to not function well? How can the educator address that? Is it possible to be a skilled reader if one of these four systems is not functioning well? Now let's move on to the reading rope. It's also usually called Scarborough's rope after the researcher Hollis Scarborough who came up with the model. As you can see in the diagram, there are two groups of rope strands, language comprehension 
and word recognition, which you should recognize from the simple view of reading. Each of those two groups are made up of smaller threads, each representing a specific skill. The main idea of this model is that weaving the threads together ultimately forms each of the two strands, and weaving the strands together forms the rope. Let's take a closer look at the strands and threads of the reading rope. First, let's examine the language comprehension strand. You're already familiar with many of the systems and skills and elements that are represented by these threads, syntax, semantics, vocabulary, reasoning, and background knowledge. The language comprehension strand demonstrates how essential those language systems and oral language are to learning to read. The other strand in the reading rope is word recognition. Just like the language comprehension strand, all the individual threads or skills that make up word recognition are essential to learning to read and becoming, and staying, a skilled reader. Now let's think about weaving these two strands together. How do the two separate strands, word recognition and language comprehension, get woven together, and what does that mean for the student? The way that this model brings these two strands and their threads together is through the reader becoming more strategic and more automatic with the skills in each strand, which weaves these strands into a strong rope. As the student gains more experience in reading and gains more background knowledge, they are more and more able to recognize and make use of text structures and organization and vocabulary and context, and they are usually able to self-correct most errors or misunderstandings when they read the text. With more and more practice with decoding and word recognition skills, reading also becomes increasingly automatic. This means that the reader can devote more of their cognitive resources to comprehension instead of having to work so deliberately at decoding the text. It's important to remember that even when word recognition is automatic and when words become sight words, decoding is actually still happening. The reading brain just doesn't have to work as hard at it and you're not as conscious of it. Now let's put the rope back together. Think about the structure of a rope. A rope with many threads and strands woven together is stronger than one single thread on its own. A lot of different but connected skills are part of the reading rope, and the rope itself is wound together to be strong as students become skilled, strong readers. We covered a lot of material in this video, so let's review. We define the word language comprehension as the ability to derive meaning from the different elements of spoken or written language. We also saw how the body of research called the science of reading has helped us understand better ways to teach children to read and better ways to help struggling readers or readers with disabilities. The science of reading also helps us understand the actual process of learning to read and what happens while we read and researchers have come up with several different models of how reading actually works. You learned about three of those models in this video, the simple view of reading, the four-part processing model, and the reading rope. The simple view of reading states that reading comprehension is the product of word recognition skill and language comprehension. The four-part processing model explains how the brain processes language and print while reading. Finally, the reading rope demonstrates the connections between the many different skills that are required for successful reading. Thanks so much for watching.